Politician suddenly checks. loses the ability to tell lies, but her approval rating skyrockets. Today I will show you a comedy film from 2020, titled Honest Candidate. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Inspired by his grandmother Kim Ok hes huge donation to society and constant will to always help the little guy, Yo Sang Suk fought a massive insurance company due to a fine print in the contract that wouldn't cover Ok He's cancer treatment. Afterward, she founded the Ok He Foundation to help students and eventually made it to Congress with her grandmother's encouragement before she died. Nowadays, Sang Suk is running for the fourth time. She has a team full of experts that take care of every single detail, keeping an eye on what sector of the townspeople they need to win over next. Her main assistant and planner behind all is Park Hee Chol, who remembers even the smallest details, like stepping on her feet to make the shoes look more worn. Everything about Sang Suk's image has been carefully chosen, and she changes her outfit and commentary accordingly to please every person she visits throughout the day, from the civilians on the streets to religious leaders. When reporters ask her tricky questions, she chooses to stay silent. Today she'll appear on TV to debate against her campaign opponents Nam Yong Sung and Shin Ji Soon. When Yong Sung makes her awkward questions about shady financial dealings with the OK He Foundation and her son's dual citizenship issue, Sang Suk quickly turns it around by mentioning rumors about him making money on stocks and clarifying she just lives in a small apartment, built on the trust and values left by her grandmother. As soon as she mentions her, she pretends to become emotional and be hurt by Yong Sung's accusations. After the interview is over and they're gone, the show's reporter Kim Joon Young asks the director Cha Yoon Kyung how come nobody digs deeper into Sang Suk's financial dealings, and Yoon Kyung tells him to drop the subject because there's nothing he can do after six years. Meanwhile, Sang Suk goes to a restaurant to have dinner with Yong Sung and important politician Kim Sang Pyo. Mm -hmm. Yong Sung is whining because Sang Suk embarrassed him on camera and he couldn't do anything because they have an agreement, so to calm the waters a bit, Sang Suk gives them information on what company stocks they should invest in next. Unaware to them, Someone is recording this whole conversation through a hole on the painting in the room. Outside the restaurant, all the assistants are having takeout. That's when Hee Chul sees the waiter sell a mysterious package to reporter Hu Wang, who runs away as soon as Hee Chul asks what is going on. Hu Wang escapes in his car before Hee Chul can take a picture of his plate but at least he gets to see and memorize the number, and the waiter refuses to answer any questions. When the bosses hear about this, Sang Pyo promises to take care of it. The next day while Sang Suk continues his campaign on the streets, Hu Wang finds his car hit by an employee of Sang Pyo's, who offers him a new expensive car in exchange of his old one and the footage he took at the restaurant. This is enough to buy his silence, so Sang Suk is safe for now. In the evening, she returns to her humble apartment and talks to all the neighbors about their problems, but only because Hee Chul whispers reminders into her ear. She's welcomed home by her husband Bong Man Sik, who is wearing his badminton uniform and loudly comments on wanting to play. As soon as they enter the apartment though, all the masks are off. Man Sik is sick of pretending to be a player just because his wife needs the badminton club votes. Their chat is interrupted by a call from Man Sik's mother, which Sang Suk takes with her best manners before the couple leaves the apartment. They do this in a very unusual way, they dress all in black and hide their faces, then climb to the roof to leave through a back door where Hee Chul is waiting for them with the car. It turns out this humble apartment is also part of the campaign charade, and their real home is a very fancy house that includes a foreign maid that doesn't speak Korean. During dinner, Man Sik has a special list of requests for his wife, because he enjoys living off her money and power, not having to work for anything at all. Later in the middle of the night, Sang Suk gets an emergency call that makes her travel to the countryside while a storm is on the way. The person that has called her is Ok Hee, who is actually alive and hiding so Sang Suk can keep on using her name as part of her sympathetic story. Ok Hee is sick of hiding, but Sang Suk reminds her that coming out clean would get them all arrested so they must stick to the lie. She also thinks her grandafter has lost the kindness she had when she was younger, but Sang Suk promises she hasn't before noticing a photograph of her grandmother with two friends. Sang Suk freaks out, thinking OK he has been in contact with old friends, and OK he gets angry because all her granddaughter cares about is to keep up her cover instead of OK he's happiness. It's already raining by the time Sang Suk leaves, and while waiting for Hee Chul to come with the car, she sees a prayers pile and decides to ask the gods to help her win the election. Back in the house, OK he prays as well asking the gods for Sang Suk to stop lying. At that moment, lightning hits the prayers pile. The next morning, when Sang Suk comes down for breakfast, Man Sik tells her his mother called and she insults her without meaning to over and over, not understanding what's wrong with her mouth. A few hours later, the couple goes to a livestream interview with a host he Chul has already spoken to so he wouldn't touch certain topics like the presidential election and R-rated jokes. However, as soon as the questions begin, Sang Suk continues not to Can control what she says and brings up those subjects herself, BTW. even admitting she and her husband Dentrius haven't been intimate for years and that she doesn't read the comments her followers send her, the same followers that are now wondering if she's drunk. Man Sik keeps on laughing, trying to make it look like she's joking, 
But the interview is a complete disaster. Sang Suk realizes she can't lie no matter the topic. After her husband leaves because she calls him an unemployed leech, she and Hichol go to a bookstore to do the presentation of her autobiography. But things keep getting worse there, she admits she didn't even read the book because a ghostwriter wrote it, that they paid off the reviews, and that a new bookstore in town is bad news for politicians because it helps people to be less dumb. Hichol follows Man 6 idea and keeps on laughing to make it look like jokes, but Sang Suk gets too nervous and ends the presentation by freaking out and taking off her wig. Her weird behavior goes viral on the internet, and Jun Young decides this is the perfect moment to dig deeper into her story. In the evening, he goes to her apartment building to see if it's true that she lives there and is shocked to find her mailbox full of utility bills. Before he manages to put them back though, he can hear her and Hichal arriving, so he hides before they can find him. Hichal checks the mailbox Hello, before chance. taking Sang Suk to her apartment, and as soon as they get into the elevator, Jun Young puts the bills back and runs away. When Hichal comes back down, he notices the mailbox is full now and immediately gets suspicious, so he runs out of the building and sees someone escaping on a car. This Wait. time he's ready to take pictures with a camera pen, but they're all blurry, so he checks what? the security camera on his car instead and sees Jun Young investigating the area. Moments later, Sang Sok and her husband go to their fancy house, where Man Six mother is waiting for them unannounced. Unable to lie, Sang Sok insults her and treats her cruelly, causing her to leave in tears. The curse is so bad and accurate that Sang Sok can't even show sympathy for Man Sik, She's actually super happy that the old hag won't visit for a while. The following day, Sang Sok goes to see a doctor, an acupuncturist and even a shaman, but none of them is able to help them, so he Chul decides to hire a campaign expert that has even helped presidents in the past, Lee Woon Hock. Woon Hock begins by calling some inside contacts of his and gets Sang Sok to appear with various important institutions as support, like soccer clubs and military. Then, they upload to the internet an embarrassing picture of Yang Sung to hurt his image. They also manipulate the most searched results online and clean all of their opponents' flyers to replace them with her own. Honesty isn't the only one of Sang Sok's problems though. There's a car around town playing and its speakers a speech about Sang Sok's son, who she gave birth to abroad for a second citizenship and so he could avoid military service, but now he can't be found by prosecutors. To solve this problem, Man Sik travels abroad to find their son Bong Yun Ho and bring him back to Korea to send him into military service. After forcing him to get a haircut, Sang Sok convinces him to join the military in exchange for a hefty payment, which Yoon Ho accepts. The next day, Woon Hak wants Sang Sok to give a press conference on her story about having a baby aboard, but Sang Sok explains she can't read that because it's a lie, she never gave birth to Yoon Ho, he's Man Sik's son with another woman. It's not just the matter of the lie, she doesn't want Yoon Ho to find out about this through a press conference, he may not have come out from her, but he's still her son. To avoid this issues with the impossible lie, Sang Sok spends the night in a freezing bath filled with ice cubes, so when the time for the conference comes, she passes out before she can finish that sentence. Sang Sok is sent to the hospital, where the TV is showing the latest news, the fact Yoon Ho isn't her biological son has somehow reached reporters' ears. When she's finally discharged, they're waiting for her outside, but she only tells them she won't be using her family as part of the campaign anymore. Some viewers decide to respect her for having raised a kid that isn't hers. Unaware that Jun Young is following her, she goes directly to the fancy house to check on his son's emotional state at hearing the news, but it turns out he's known since he was eight. Man Sik told him while he was drunk, and Sang Sok throws him in the swimming pool as punishment. Meanwhile, Jun Young secretly meets with Sang Sok's maid, who to speak Korean after all, to see if he can get some secrets from the inside. Some days later, Sang Sok is doing a presentation at a theater by using carefully written true phrases about things she's already done for the city. Suddenly, she's interrupted by Ji Soon, who has shown up to accuse her of being in a bussiness arrangement with the insurance company she once fought against. Sang Sok is about to confess this is true and that she did it because they would invest in the company of her choice, when he Chul pretends to have seen a bomb, pushing Sang Sok out of the way and making everyone leave the theater. When they return home, the first a thing bomb. they do is to get rid of all the gifts the insurance company ever got them, they will have to move out too, since this nice house is also being rented by them. Some time later, Sang Sok is glad to see she's back on first place in the polls, so Woon Hak shares the next step in his plan. Trying to be sweet again won't work, so Sang Sok is going to promote her image as the most honest politician in the country. With the help of Yoon Ho, who has written a catchy song about her, Sang Sok talks to the people and appears in debates discussing how corrupted the system is, which gains her people's sympathy. One afternoon, when they drive by the Okehi Foundation, Sang Sok sees a woman camping at the entrance as a sign of protest because her son ended his life over low grades. Sang Sok wants to look into it, but Sang Pyo has given extra orders to ignore guys, it. Meanwhile, guys, is, uh, uh, there's so many names that are all different, but cannot. Uh, uh, Chul takes okay he to a routine checkup because on her fake papers, he's her grandson, and he admits after all these years it does feel real. The doctor thinks okay what? he will die soon, but she doesn't listen, 
claiming they all have been telling her the same things for years now. Someone does end up talking to the woman protesting though, Jun Young, who then takes all the info he's obtained to analyze it with Yoon Kyung over dinner. They discover the OKHE OK Foundation is corrupted to the core and people can just pay more money to be admitted over others instead of passing the exam, and to the not VIP students they would just give out. not Jun Young exposes- These are not names that are familiar to us, okay? Okay? They're just not- they're not familiar, okay? So having- having them, so many at some time, I- I can't- I can't remember all this who's online who. online during a mukbang stream, causing an instant scandal. While Sang Pyo begins getting rid of all the Long documents that may serve as proof of his involvement Jan in the Okehi okay Foundation, Okehi okay herself takes a risk and goes Sang Sok to her office by keeping her face hidden. She's angry over what Sang Sok has done with Sang her name Sok and in return. Sang Sok is angry uh, that her grandmother is risking being caught. Uh, the two of them return Jiang to the prayers Bong, pile in the Okehi's okay house, hard, unaware man. that Woon Hop is following them and now knows Okehi okay is alive. Together the two what? women pray for Sang These Sok These are actor names! What are you talking about? But there are no signs they've been heard. Afterwards, Sang Sok goes to see Jun Young, who doesn't accept to stop digging and won't believe either that her intentions were that good That was literally his name! The next day, Woon Hak quits his position with her and goes to work with Yang Sung, who tells her he now knows her grandmother is alive and staying in one of the hospitals in the city. Sang Sok rushes to the clinic and Chul explains okay he passed out last night, and he didn't tell her not to worry her. Just he doesn't hating. think the secret is in danger, because if Yang Sung had any real proof, he would have already gone to the news. Then, Sang Sok gives her grandmother a quick visit, crying when okay he shows her support for her campaign. Some time later, Sang Sok gives a speech on the street, but she barely has any audience. She admits having become rotten while at the same time, okay he is dying at hospital, making the prayers pile glow. After the speech, Sang Sok meets with Sang Pyo, who informs her he'll be backing Yang Sung instead now because if Sang Sok keeps opening her mouth, she'll bring them all down, so she should quit. While trying to convince him that's not the case, Sang Sok finds herself lying, but when she goes to tell her husband the great news, she's told about Okehi's okay death. Man Sik and Sang Sok go to Okehi's okay funeral but they don't stay for long because they're still pretending she was Ichul's grandmother. But at least Sang Sok is relieved to see Okehi's okay friends are coming over to say her goodbyes. Later, however, she and Ichul find themselves stopping Sang Pyo, Yang Sung and their bodyguards from getting closer to the body before cremating it because they want to identify it themselves, calling it evidence. Because they don't know her curse is broken yet, Sang Sok reminds them she can't lie and gives them her word that she'll step down from the election, impressing them when she says she respects them both. But Sang Sok still has a plan. The next day, He Chul goes to see Huang to buy the original recording of the meeting at a very high price. On his way out, he takes the keys of the car he got as a bribe and tries to use it to leave, but Sang Pyo's employee shows up to steal the pen drive from him. He Chul takes Huang's older car to escape and picks up Sang Sok to hide her in the pen drive in the secret room at the OKHI OK Foundation, since they don't know He Chul knows it exists. After reviewing the student admission paperwork and seeing how vile it is, Sang Sok leaves the hideout to apologize to the grieving mother that is still protesting at the building entrance. At that moment she's found by Sang Pyo and Yang Sung, who are after the pen drive. Sang Sok leaves in the car He Chul left her and the men begin chasing her through the city, which is easy because Sang Sok hasn't driven in years. Eventually they corner her in a street that has been closed because of an accident, but luckily, He Chul and Man Sik arrive to help. While they fight the bodyguards, Sang Sok struggles against her former politician friends until she finally manages to get out and run back to the main street to get a taxi. After checking the pen drive is safe where she hid it in her hair, she takes a moment to remember everything she's learned so far and comes to terms with what she has to do. She tells the taxi driver to take her to the TV station, where she hands the pen drive to Jun Young so he can have the big scoop. The next day, she offers a press conference only two people are attending, but when she's about to come clean and confess everything, the hall is suddenly flooded with reporters that want to know what kind of game she's been playing. It turns out Huang got the pen drives mixed and instead of giving He Chul the one with the dinner Sang Sok had with her opponent, he gave him the most expensive one in his collection, a compilation of videos that incriminate various congressmen in criminal activities that go from what? harassment and gambling to urinating in public. After visiting her grandmother properly though, Sang Sok still does the right thing and gives herself up for investigation even if she wasn't in those videos. Two years later, Sang Sok is released from jail and is making money from the book she's written about her experience. Her husband and son live with her in a small jail? apartment and still expect her to pay for everything. But Sang Sok has learned her lesson and continues to be brutally honest, so after telling the two men to get jobs, she goes to the TV station to have her first debate as a comeback into a political career. She scolds He Chul for telling her not to touch certain subjects and the host for not being neutral, then gets ready to drop some truth bombs. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more guys, videos like guys, this. Guys, guys, I thought I was gonna love on a movie. I feel like I know less about the movie having it watched now.
if I watched it, I'd be now more confused coming in with this information than if I had none.